we commend the body of this man, O Lord, to thee. A man like ourselves, who sought liberty in the voyage to America, and now that is seen fit to take him from us. We pray, O Lord, that he will find it with thee. Accept his soul, Lord, and may his body rest in peace. Amen. English? Yes. Good. And your name is? Jacques Marchand. I see you from France, is it? Your age? 24. And I see you have a trade, too. Good. Um, religion? Jewish. And why did you come to the United States? To be free. Welcome to America. Why? Oh, my dear friend, if you tore my breast open, you'd find a question that's deep in my heart. Flaubert is right. Art is the only answer. I refuse to believe that art and freedom are incompatible. Art can also serve freedom. I don't understand. How did this fool end up ruling for art? The people wanted him. They remembered the, his uncle, the great Napoleon. With all that false glory, they forgot about the blood. Yes, that's why the statue was so important. Easy, my friend. But the idea is yours. A statue made in France. Designed in France and placed in the United States, the only truly free country on earth, facing Europe, a beacon of light. We shall see. No. It's the Emperor who should see. 
He's the one we should be crying about, no, please. I was calling on Monsieur Laboulay with some sketches for a sculpture. I'm sure it was just a coincidence that he is one of our great liberal conspirators. I am a sculptor, that's all. But you are also a liberal, no? By what authority are you questioning me, Inspector? By Napoleon III. I would like the names of your friends. Either you charge me or you let me go. The charge for that would be treason, and as you know, the penalty for treason is the guillotine. Liberté. Allez. Good night, Monsieur Bartoldi. to come to New York for 10 years almost, and so I, I have prepared myself. But you've never been a clerk. I just want to work. What religion are you? Pardon? Are you Catholic or Protestant? I'm a Jew. A Jew. I know what I want. I know the elements. The models, the loop. I know the face. Have you tried the art schools? Yes, yes. I've tried everywhere. I've tried the prostitutes at the gal. Maybe she doesn't exist. Are you saying liberty doesn't exist? No, not in Paris. There. You see? Huh. Look somewhere else. Yes, but where? Where, Laboule?
Brother Pierre, a young woman in a yellow dress. Did you see which way she went? Let me move. Let me move. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Please, if my aunt returns, I'll be in terrible trouble. But you don't understand. No, I don't understand. Please, listen, I am engaged in one of the greatest projects of all time, and I want you to be my model. You'll be immortal. <laughs> oh, immortal. Hey, Anna, am I really beautiful? Yes. But what do you really see? A light. Brighter than all the lights of Paris. <laughs> I've never even seen Paris. Well, that's all the more reason to come with me. I don't even know you. I'm only asking you to be my model. You're free to leave if you don't like Paris. Suppose I don't like you. My aunt would be furious. Why? Because she needs me. I work for her. To do what? Everything. She would be lost without me. I'm... I'm her... Slave. <laughs> and you want me to become your slave? Yes. Yes, I do, Jean. You don't understand, Jean. The world will be your slave. Your image will be the basis for the largest sculpture in the history of mankind. Jean, you'll live forever. You must understand, uh, what I'm going to ask you is for the art, no? Yes. I, uh, I want you to remove your robe. But, you mean, sit here with you without any clothing at all? Jean, please understand, the body beneath the drape is the true architecture. If I can't see your body, I can't do my work. You must. Ah, it must be lovely. Ah, oh, you must know. Ah, we can't play a single play. It's looking marvelous. Yes, and I'm making progress. Delicious. An exquisite nose. She's a very good model. Lovely. Yes. Gentlemen, please. Thank you, mademoiselle. Do you know I know nothing of what's been happening? I have been so involved in our project. Tell me. As you know, this fool, Louis Napoleon, is trying to pick himself a war. With Prussia. If we have the war, you might not be able to finish it. I don't understand, Auguste. If they have the war, there will be no money for statues, my friend. When will this war happen? Perhaps this year. Certainly next. There is almost no end to human stupidity. Well, there's only one solution. We must continue with our project, no matter who wins the war. Nobody ever does. Merci, mademoiselle. Merci, mademoiselle. 
Thank you, my mother. Some work must be done. An accent. What are you, anyhow? I want to be an American. French, maybe. Yes, yes, I am from France, but but you don't understand. I, I... Now, where you are to go home, there's nothing for you here. We have a cover slip! Get some food. I'll give you food, you filthy immigrant. <laughs> Look at you now. 
You just like to live. Bonjour. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Marchand, Jacques Marchand. There's some barley soup on the stove. Would you like some? Please. Uh, who are you? I'm Wyatt Trevor. I'm a boarder here, next door to Seamus Riley's shop. You're French, I guess. Yes. Well, I hope you like the soup. It's Irish. <laughs> oh! Have you heard the news about your country? There's a war on. France and Russia? Or is it Prussia? I always get those two mixed up. Russia. Aye, I heard all the men talking about it. It was in the newspapers. You have not read it. Well, I, uh... Truthfully... How's the soap? You cannot read. No. Why? Well, I... I'd like to learn it. The reading, but... I'm already 20, Mr. Marchand. I suppose it's too late. This is America. You must learn to read. I must. studio and make it clean. Mother, please don't. I'll help your career, you'll see. Paris is in revolt. Napoleon's troops have surrounded the city. We can't stay here. We must leave together in the morning. Oh? To go where? Anywhere. Where do you think you're going? You won't leave me here alone. I'll never forgive you. I forbid you to do it. Why? Why? Please answer. I, I must find. You model. You risk your life for her. Don't be upset. I must continue with my work. I don't understand. Risking your life for a stranger. Is she more important than me? You're my life. My life, Augusta. Please. Don't leave me. Mother, you don't understand. I was there. This ridiculous war. I looked into the devil's eye, and through it all I could see only one face. Liberty. I must find her. I must find Jean. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Word? War. W A R. But what's his name? It's boring. Please. I want to know. For as long as I can remember, this man has ruled France. He filled the people's heads with foolish notions about patriotism, glory, the great strength of France. Growing up, I heard nothing else. At the same time, he suppressed all personal freedom. <clears throat> the people didn't care. They wanted prosperity. They preferred the lie to the truth. That is why I left. But the people of Paris rose up in revolt against the repression. So, it's about being free? Yes. <laughs> well, they should have it, you ask me. I hope they win. They can't. The tyranny will be worse than ever. We're lucky to be living in a free country, is all I can say. You're a good person, Moya. What is it? Oh, I... I want to be able to know things. Like you. Like what's in books and all. It's not too late. Do you think? No. It's hard to believe this thing could be so light. That technique you use, what you call it again? Repoussé. Repoussé. Sounds French. Sounds expensive. It sure works like a dream. Mm -hmm. You see, there is always an answer if you have a problem. Around Paris, the soil is very um, spongy, soft. Too much water from the Seine. Well, you can't have a monument of any size made of marble or granite. It will sink right into the air. So, we have developed Repoussé as the solution. Very light, very beautiful. I was taught by a master. Can you teach it to me? Of course. Yeah, uh, worn out, lads. It is half ten in the morning. Well, uh, now you say here, Shimas, just warming up. <laughs> well, people. <laughs> You're a good man, Jack. The damn fine coppersmith.
What a beautiful Sunday. Yes. Uncle Shana says that you're a registered Democrat. He told me he would fire me if I did not. <laughs> Have you read all of it? I mean, every word. Not yet. I will. And what's it about? It's about a man named Thoreau who went to live alone in the woods beside a place called Walden Pond. And is there a story? I mean, does anything happen? Nothing happens. And uh, everything happens. It's amazing. Yes. We teach me to read. I'm not a teacher. I see. Ah, a Frenchman teaching an Irish woman to read English is a problem, no? No. I, I mean, yes, it, it's a problem. Oh, maybe I don't. Still, we could try. I don't suppose you'd be interested in going to church with me, would you? No. No. Would you like to go home, then? I could make you a cup of tea. Uncle Seamus and all the others are off to mass. I'm all alone down there. Cup of tea. Why not? County in Ireland you came from, mm -hmm. huh? County Alabama. Chuck, <laughs> <laughs> if they knew you were a Jew, they'd be in shock. <laughs> Should I go out and buy a false nose? Or oh, don't be so bloody sensitive, Chuck. I was... Look who's coming through the door. Show you how to do the jig. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>
go. Let her come. Why not? She, she can't stain my old room. Yeah, you don't understand. Your mother is moving to Paris from Colmar. She stay here a few days until she gets an apartment. What is there to understand? She would never accept it. Us, I mean. How old are you? Darling, that's not the point. It's only for one week. And you want me to leave? Yes. Yes, I do. Wonderful. Darling, you don't have to go right away. You can stay for one to Tuesday. I have made arrangements for you to stay in Laboulet's estate in the country. It's wonderful. You'll love it. If it's so wonderful, let your mother stay there. My buttons. What? My buttons I can't reach. Oh, you can't. No. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> Tell me that you love me. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Where is she? I want to stay here with you. You know it's not possible for you to live here at the studio. I wish I wanted us so to be together again. The way we were when you were a boy. Mother, I'm a grown man now. Really. I must live my own life. Because of your mistress? No. Jean has nothing to do with this. Because of my work. I must live alone. I don't believe you. Well, it's absolutely true. Besides, I must prepare for my trip to America. Wasn't I? Our friend Bartoldi will leave for America in a month and select a location for the monument. He will be met by members of the Franco-American Union who will handle all the details. Meanwhile, here in France, the money will come from ordinary citizens, not a sou from the government. Are we agreed? To, to, to Bartholdi. 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 To liberty. 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 I envy you, Auguste. I wish you were coming with me. No, no, I have too many responsibilities here. It is an irony, you know. I've spent a lifetime writing about a country I've never seen. You'll come for the unveiling. I will be satisfied if you only find a site. And I'll be satisfied if you only raise the money. Thank you, my friend. Au revoir, Bye. mon ami. Au revoir. miss you so much already. Darling, I'll only be gone for three months. I'm done. Well, I'll, I'll write you every single day. I'll make a million drawings of you. And when I come back, we'll get... Well... Thank you. They're beautiful. 
<laughs> you kind of like that language. You were talking to that bearded fella. That's Yiddish. What is that language anyway? It's the language of the diaspora. That's um, that's what we call all of the uh, the Jews who are in exile. Uh, the people who are separated from Israel. And in the diaspora, we have invented a new language. Not Hebrew, not German, but um, a little of both. So this diaspora is like us, isn't it? It's just like the Irish. But they leave home and wander the world. So they call us the wild geese. But they're all the same, aren't they? Or separated from home? In a way. Yes. It's amazing. So, Jack, mm -hmm. that man that come into the shop today, what's that you call him? A, a schlamazel? <laughs> a schlamazel. 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 Yeah, I like that. Well, now, Jack, what's the difference between a schlamazel and a, and a schnorrer? <laughs> <laughs> You think we was born in this country? <laughs> Seamus, I was born in this country. I just didn't like the first 21 years of my life as much as I like these last seven. Huh? What was it like, huh? Being a slave. Were they changed? My turn, huh? I meant no offense. Uh, you didn't give me none, Jack. It's just that some things that ain't words enough for the same. Robin! Three more here, please. You ain't gonna serve no nigger. In here, are you, John? Always. I said, you ain't gonna serve no nigger. Hey, why don't you lads go home to your mothers and leave the drinking to the men? <laughs> Who are you, old man? His father? Well, you'll find out in about three seconds if you don't leave us be. Yeah, I got a better idea. You leave.
that island over there to the left, the one with the goats on it. What's that called? That'd be Bedloe's Island, sir. And so, in my opinion, the best available site for the statue is Bedloe's Island. The statue would be of a woman, as you can see, holding a torch. This would serve a practical value uh, as a lighthouse, but it is also symbolic, representing the flame of liberty. It will face out from the city, greeting all the new arrivals. Those exiles who arrive each day in the freedom of New York, and the rays of her torch will shine as if illuminating all the dark corners of Europe with the idea of liberty. Excuse me. I believe that if we begin today, we can unveil her in the year of your 100th anniversary as a free nation. 1876. How much? I beg your pardon? How much will the damn thing cost? Well, the truth is that we don't know. Nevertheless, the entire cost of the statue itself will be borne by the people of France. We refuse to accept any money from the French government. And with the exception of Bedloe's Island, which belongs to your government and, of course, would have to be donated, we expect nothing of the American government. We hope and we expect that the American people will contribute to the building of the base and the cost of erecting the statue, all of which will be built in Paris. But gentlemen, basically we believe that the idea of liberty cannot be measured in dollars or francs. Liberty is priceless. Who is that man? Charles Sumner, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for many years, a staunch abolitionist. He is perhaps the only man we have in this young country who can pass for an elder statesman. Mr. Bartholdi, I'm Charles Sumner. I'm here to help. Well, thank you, sir. Where would we start? With President Grant himself? In short, Mr. President, we feel that this great monument, this statue, will serve as an undying symbol of the friendship between the French and American people. I see. I truly believe, Mr. President, that this great monument what do will represent... you want? Is there a budget for this enterprise, Mr. Bartholdi? Well, no, not yet. We are I didn't looking ask at estimates. That. I didn't ask that. What I want you to tell me is this. What's in it for you? For me? Well, I suppose the joy of accomplishment, yes. The joy of accomplishing something so magnificent, of accomplishing... The joy of accomplishment. <laughs> I've heard that song before. Oh, have I heard that song before. From every damn tin horn chiseler that ever walked in the White House. From every cheating bum who ever said he was my friend. From generals, heads of state. 
the joy of accomplishment. Bartholdi, how much of this money goes into your pocket? Don't you care about the idea of liberty, Mr. President? Care? I fought a war for it. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'll see what arrangements can be made uh, about that low island. I would appreciate hearing from you before I leave for France. Well, I'll see what I can do. Thank you, sir. Sweet empty sky of June without a strain. Faint gray blue dewy mist on far off hills. War yellow sunlight flooding mead and plain that each dark copse and hollow overfills. The rippling laugh of unseen rain fed hills. Weeds delicate flowered, white and pink and gold. A murmur and a singing. In mine own flesh and soul, the sin had birth. Through mine own anguish, it must be atoned. Our saviors are not saints and ministers, but tear-stung women, children soft of heart, or fellow sufferers, who by some chance word, some glance of comfort, save us from despair. Excuse me, Ms. Lazarus. Uh, my name is Jacques Marchand. I was at the reading today. Yes, Mr. Marchand. Uh, let me ask you something. Now that your um, audience is gone, what do you see all around you? Oh, some poor people, or immigrants, perhaps. Or... And now let me tell you what you're seeing. You are seeing, you're seeing the Irish who have survived the famine. You are seeing Negroes who were born in slavery. You are seeing Germans, Poles, and, and Frenchmen, people from Italy, Hungary, Spain, people who fled hunger, persecution, and kings. And you see Jews. Yes. You are a Jew, aren't you? So am I. So? I don't understand how a Jew with your talent can write poetry that is so insipid, brainless, pointless. Good night. No, no, wait, 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 please. I, I, I must talk to you. You can't let your talent wither on a lot of second-hand sentiments out of books. Are you a critic? No, no, I'm a coppersmith and a good one. That is the point. Who speaks for me? I, I'm not quite sure I understand you. Uh, not far from here, immigrants like myself live in incredible filth in the richest city on the earth. Many of them are Jews. I'm a poet, not a politician. Yes, yes, but the words can mean something. They, they can be weapons. Look at, look at what Harriet Beecher Stowe did with slavery. She wrote propaganda. So you say let them eat cake. You, a Jew, you know how most Jews live here? Many of them are worse off than they were in Europe. Well, I don't believe that. Come, I'll show you. That's all right, Jordan. He's a friend. All right, show me. And you live here, too? Yes. 
But I have a job. Welcome to the world of the immigrants. I want to see your flat. Well, uh, I don't think... Are that... you married? No, not married. Well, then I think that we should go and see your flat. Uh, in the hall. And how do you cook? There's a common kitchen on the first floor. Stendhal, James Russell Lowe, Poe. <laughs> what kind of coppersmith are you? You think working men don't read? This is America. That's why we're here. Well, have you read any Emerson? He happens to be a friend of mine. His world is not this world. It smells of a museum. He's our greatest writer. Yes. And since this is America, we can disagree, and uh, no one ends up in prison. This is great. No? I think you should probably read him. <sighs> Excuse me. I... I don't mean to disturb you. I... Uh, Moya. Moya. This is uh, Emma Lazarus, a good poet. Miss Lazarus, Moya Trevor. Nice to meet you. Well, I should be going. My father must be terribly worried by now. Uh, thank you for the tour, Mr. Marshall. I'll go down with you to your carriage. Oh, no, no, no. That won't be necessary, really. No. I insist it is not safe. It was nice to meet you, Mrs. <laughs> Miss. Lazarus, Emma. Will you be right up, Jack? I have a pot of tea waiting for you. Yes. you'll think about what I've said. And thank you for showing me this world. responsible for her, you know. She was my sister's wee girl. When all of them died during famine times, I put her in a convent and I, I came over here. She was just a, an infant then. Later on, when I had some money, I, 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 I sent for her. I'm the nearest thing to a father she ever had. I understand.
<laughs> I don't understand this. I don't understand you. The hell with you. Let's get out of here. Jack, please. We're in God's house. Oh, we are. Well, if you believe in this Jesus business, and I don't as well, you know, there are a few facts you ought to know, and the basic fact is this. Jesus was a Jew. Now this Egypt up from the box, this cement head of a priest tells me that Jack Bashan can't get married in this church because he's a Jew? The very rules. Uh, well, uh, Moy is a Gentile. A rabbi couldn't marry us either. Hell with them all. Rules is out of the dark ages. This is America. Yeah, but if you do it better than any church, bigger and better. Draft the old dump that was anyway. And so, with the power invested in me as the mayor of New York, I now pronounce you man and wife. Yes, yes, uh, just one moment. Yes, this is, uh, uh, this is Bartoldi. Uh, this is Bill Ferdinand Evans. We're in the lobby, sir. May we come up? Oh, yes, uh, yes, of course, Mr. Evans. Yes, do. Uh, come right up. That's right, it's right. I'll be right there. <laughs> so I read about the problems you've been having uh, raising $100,000 for the statue of space, and I... Perhaps I could help. Well, as you know, the great American architect, Richard Hunt, is building the base. I think it's going to be wonderful. Mr. Bartholdi, I would like to contribute the sum of $25,000 for the building of the base. Oh, Mr. Evans, I am truly, truly <laughs> delighted. Just one thing. We're going to need a few improvements. I've been looking at the uh, torch. The torch of freedom. Yes, yes. And, uh... We believe that freedom is a relative thing. It often gives people bad ideas, leads them into unfortunate actions. So uh, we thought uh, a symbol of eternal vigilance. After all, sir, what good's a, a torch if somebody could come along and blow it out, huh? <laughs> yes, sir, to survive, this country must be able to defend itself. And in consideration for our contribution, sir, I'd like to have the name of our product inscribed on its base. Castoria, enlightening the world. A wonderful slogan, sir. For the greatest castor oil in America. Goodbye, Mr. Rubens. Life would have been so much simpler if I'd chosen to be a portrait artist like you. Perhaps. But even as a portrait artist, a man must keep his sense of humor. I can't. I can't. It's a strange country. And a young one. And a wonderful one, too. If you keep your sense of humor. There's only one thing to be done. You must make a public announcement. That will shame them into giving you Bedloe's Island. And what if they refuse? They won't. You'll see. Hmm. Wait. Where are we going, Lafarge? Tammany Hall, the headquarters of the New York Democrats. And by all accounts, a sinkhole of corruption and wickedness. Can we go inside? <laughs> Would you 
anyone like to dance? Do you think we should? Well, if you don't dance with me, I'm gonna dance alone. <laughs> Tweed himself. Oh, the best captain in the fort. Oh, uh, introduce me to the lovely bride. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is my niece, boy. And the happy bridegroom is Jacques Marchand. The fine hoppers with a kind of registered Democrat, my well, friend. Uh, well, vote early and vote often, as I always say. Good <laughs> uh, to meet you. The judge come for the range for the mayor himself to do the honor. Proving once again that it's better to know the judge than to know the law. I <laughs> Do they have a place to live? Uh, well, uh, Bill, they're looking. Well, get them a place, my friend. Uh, and now, uh, may I have the pleasure of a dance with the lovely bride, sir? Of course. Thank you. My dear. Oh, oh, oh. It's too lovely. himself, William Marcy Tweed. You must have seen the amazing cartoons of him in Harvard's. He's responsible for more plundering than any man since the Visigoths. <laughs> well, at least they haven't asked me to put a statue of him in New York Harbor. Be careful, they might. <laughs> So beautiful. Oh, stop that. No, I mean it. I've seen a lot of pretty women here and back home. Oh, I think you did. But none like you. You make up lies, Robert Johnson. I'm not going to let you go, Linda Thorne. You know that. Not ever. <laughs> North Fork Street, seven dollars a month. Okay. North Fork Street, seven dollars a month. How tall? Two hundred feet at least. Ah. And that is just the statue. The base would be another hundred feet. So altogether, the statue would rise three hundred feet above the harbor. It could be seen for miles around. And how many jobs are involved? I would say uh, stonemasons to uh, build the base, the pedestal, about 100, and uh, to erect the structure, about 300. Plus getting the pieces to Bedloe's Island on boats, then riggers, food for the workers. And then when it's finished, somebody has to look after it. The staff, am I right? Right. Then, of course, they'll be visitors. And they'll be visitors. And they'll want food and, uh, and souvenirs, of course. What's the name of this damn thing? Liberty Enlightening the World. It's too long. It won't fit in the headlines in the damn newspapers. He is right. Statue of Liberty. You know something? 
I like it. It's a loss. <laughs> I'll drink to that. The Statue of Liberty. Well, gentlemen, enjoy yourself. It's on the house. You said you'd be gone three months. You stayed five. You said you would write to me every day. That lasted only two weeks. Do you expect me to go all waiting for you? What's that? My aunt came all the way down from Colmar to see me, knowing I was alone. So now we have battle with a great detective. Do you know that all the time I was in America, I never once touched another woman? Of course not. How could you find a woman a hundred feet tall? That's the only woman you love, and she doesn't even exist. Yes, yes, you're right. After all these years, she doesn't exist. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, it's all right, darling. It's all right. It's my fault. I've been away far too long. I haven't been fair to you. You have every right to do as you please. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it was my aunt. Oh. We can begin at last. We should call it Liberty. Liberty Island. <laughs> Jack? Is everything all right? Sunday. I don't have to work. I'm alive. Everything is all right. You never talk anymore. You used to talk all the time. I used to love to listen to you. You knew so many things. I know almost nothing. thinking, Jack. After the baby's born and we Sarah's grown a bit, I'm thinking that maybe I could go to school. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I could learn all those things I never did learn. And you could help me, Jack. We could talk all the time then. About the things in some books and all. Uh, history and thinking and stories and all. And I could learn poems, too. Wouldn't that be fun? You and me and the kids all together reciting, like, all those poems that they've written. And Shakespeare, too. That would be the smartest family on the block. Moya. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I could maybe, I, I could study art, go to one of them schools. I, 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 I could learn how it's all done and, and, and what all the, they mean by it, all them artists and sculptors. And then uh, you and, and me and the kids, all of us together, we could go to the museums and we could look at everything and then we could all talk about it together later. And you'd be so smart and all the way you are. And I'd be able to talk about it too, Jack. And I'd understand it. And maybe one of the kids could be an artist. <laughs> and, and we could go to concerts and, and listen to music. And I, we could, uh, 
That would be nice. We talk all the time. We talk. I'm going for a walk. Are you going to mass? Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think I'm going out today. Jack? You won't leave me, will you? No. I won't leave. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh, you're looking well. You too. <clears throat> Thank you. So, why have you asked me to meet you here? To see you. I've been... I can't think of the word. Uh, I need to talk. I want to know what you think of things, everything. The bridge to Brooklyn, electricity. Flaubert, Salambo, this writer, Melville, the, the statue they'll put in the harbor, the plans they have for the museum, everything. How's your wife, Jack? She's well. Why don't you talk about such things with her? I can't. I need you. That's impossible. We can be friends, nothing more. Tell you, Bartholdi, we seem to have touched a nerve. All over the nation, school children are collecting money, one centime at a time. We will have the money we need. Yes, but we won't have the statue. Not for 1876, not for the American centennial. The work is taking far longer than anyone anticipated. But the head and the torch are now complete, no? Yes, they are. So, put in these holes? Well, just a piece. <laughs> the cognac. Yes, it can go as a sample of what is to come. After all, it's a torch that represents liberty. That is a very good idea, Lebrun. She hasn't returned. No, it's been too much now. There's only one solution to a problem with a woman, my friend. Another woman. No, I tried that. Please, sir, may I have your contribution for the Statue of Liberty? Really? <laughs> no, no, no. Ça va, ça va. La liberté, bien sûr. Merci. 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 a big one, Jack. A beautiful boy, strong and healthy. She's fine. It was a difficult delivery, but she's fine. Can I see them? Of course. How are you doing? Well, I was born here, but I haven't been here since the war. Tell me, uh, how are things? Many people have left. Your mother among them. And the Prussians have moved in their own people. If you don't resist, life goes on. But if they knew that you were here. What do you mean if they knew I was here? Well, everybody knows Bartholdi. The Prussians don't favor the statue? 
People who run countries are not in favor of liberty. You must know that. Can I make you some tea? No, thank you. Actually, I was looking for someone that I used to know. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir. taking shape before my eyes. Every day the money arrives. I'm bringing a hand and the torch with me to Philadelphia, but I... I'm incomplete without you. I need you. Marry me. I can't marry you now. Your mother was right. Bartoli, don't you see? I'm not your liberty. I'm not a statue. Go home to her. Make her happy. And when you can accept the responsibilities of being a man, all of them, come back to me. Yes, he's wonderful, don't you think? Yes, but uh, too emotional. I prefer Ang. How could... We never seem to agree on anything. What, are, are you afraid of emotion? Sometimes. Well, we have very little in common. And yet we always seem to find each other in these places that we go to. For hide. I was going to say the study. Oh, you see? We disagree again. <laughs> if uh, Delacroix could spare you for a moment, uh, let me take you back into the real world. Mm -hmm. well, how is your child? Children. How many do you have? I could tell you, but I'm afraid that uh, you would disagree. <laughs> You better go. Nobody has ever seen anything like this before, Monsieur Dufour. Yeah. That's still pets. 
awkward, rather graceless, but strong, August. Strong. Well, you tell me how all this turns out. All at once. A real damned emergency. Do you know anything about this kind of copper work they call by a French word, uh, remedé? Repoussé? Yeah, yeah, that's it. But look, I got this ship down on my pier, and on board they got this piece of this thing, uh, the Statue of Liberty. You know that thing? Well, we was unloaded, and something got fouled up, and, and anyway, it, it fell and it tore a hole in the statue. The fellow that made it, he's gone loony. And it's going to be in Philadelphia next week. I'll get my tools. Francis, calm down. Take it easy. We'll take care of it. You want to see a beautiful child? Look at that. Looks just like the mother. All that fine craftsmanship. And look at this carelessness. We're doing everything we can, sir. We're searching the city for copper. I need men who can do repose. Are you mad? Even in France, we don't have men who know such a craft. We're ruined. Ruin. Excuse me, sir, but you're wasting your time. And you're wasting mine. I need men who can do that, Jose. Well, that's right. It won't be difficult. He showed us. Where did you learn represent? From Jakob Jemis, the master, in a shtetl six miles from Colmar in Alsace-Lorraine. I'm from Colmar. I know that, maestro. I've read much about you here. Are you in a hurry? Yes. Will you get us a crane so we could get it off of the statue? Move it over by the custom shed over there. Then get us some room and, and, and some of your help and some lights. Well, you heard him go. But how much copy do you figure we'll need, Jack? Uh, we'll have to replace the whole section to be safe two square yards. You right back. Very fine work. Thank you. In fact, it's very beautiful. Thank you. Um, you'd better get into some other clothes. We're going to need your help. Ah, here we go. 
another yeah. bucket. Put it on. This is extraordinary. That never works as fast. <laughs> it's the American way, eh? Choice. No, no choice at all. <laughs> now, I'm going to take to heart. Two hours. All right. All right. Ready? Up. Save Liberty. It was an honor to work with you. <laughs> I do we send the bill to his nips over there. <laughs> Please, you must come to Philadelphia. All of you, bring your families. You've made this possible. We'll celebrate the centennial together. Well, it's very nice of you, Mr. Bartoli, but uh, we're working people and from here to Philadelphia. It's... You will come as my guest. It will be wonderful. Now, what do you say, sir, to those skeptics who object to the statue as a throwback to pagan gods? I say that's rubbish. The statue is a woman. She's not a god. She's a symbol for, for modern America, not some dim pagan past. Well, there's some suffragettes in this country who think that the statue is hypocritical. Because if she were to come alive and walk off the pedestal, she wouldn't be able to vote in this country. You agree with that? No. No, I don't. I don't think it's hypocritical. But then again, of course, I am a citizen of France, and I think it would be improper of me to criticize a country that I love, even though it's not my own. All right, another question. Why should the people of the entire United States pay for a monument that'll be placed only in New York? Should this just be paid for by New York? Mr. Pulitzer, New York is an international city. Through its harbor, past people of all nations. I want the statue to be for everyone in the United States, not just people who live in New York. All right, well, thank you very much. What did you say your first name was? Joseph. 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 Joseph Pulitzer of the St. Louis Post. We need your help. We need everyone's help. You will write about it. I will. Please. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you call them. Actually, you would call them one and two. No. Oh, you want some more? Have some more. Listen, Jack, I've been thinking about this for a week. I want you to come to Paris. As we get closer and closer to the end of this project, I need someone with your skill and your quickness. No, 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 no. I want you. Don't you understand? I want someone in Paris who understands New York, understands the workmen, the materials. I, I don't know if I'm capable of doing that. Of course you are. How long, how long will this job last? 
That's a long time. What will you be doing? Raising your money. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Say yes. Jack, look. The salary will be very good, even by American standards. You have a family. You can save money. You can buy a house. Yes, no, I'm flattered, but I'll, I'll have to talk it over with my wife. I'm offering you an opportunity to go home. To France. Vous êtes unis devant Dieu et que l'homme ne sépare pas ce que Dieu a uni. Et maintenant, allez en paix. Let's all go back to Paris together. I've ordered a celebration dinner at the best restaurant in Montmartre. And the studio. Wait till you see how I've arranged it. There'll be plenty of room for the three of us. Mama, I, uh, I think it best if Jean and I lived alone. But I promise you I won't be in your way. Mama, we would prefer to live alone. Your wife, what does she say? She's delighted. I learned enough in two years to buy a house. And that's what she's always wanted. She comes from a long line of sea captain's wives. You're running from her too, aren't you? Perhaps. I couldn't bear to watch you walk away again, so... I'm going to stand up and go now. I wish you all good luck. Wow. Sure, you'll be back before you know it. Yes. And we'll have a lovely house. Yes. With the yard. Yes. And some green. Yes. And, and, and the children will grow up to be big and strong. Oh, and smart like their father. <laughs> Get the last one. Same trip to you. Oh, he, he'll be back in the blink of an eye. The French responsibility has been taken care of, as you can see, Mr. Ambassador. But I fear for the American side. What do you mean? He means, Mr. Pulitzer, the people of the United States aren't prepared to pay for the base or the erection of the statue after it arrives in New York. Wait a moment. You mean that the people of the United Asha. States would insult the people of France by refusing the gift? Precisely. Well, that's outrageous. With all the millionaires in our country, you think they'd be able to finance the base out of pocket money? You don't know much about our millionaires, Mr. Pulitzer. They don't see how you can create an enterprise unless it's to make money. Well, I'm about to buy a newspaper in New York called The World. Something will be done. Immediately. The people did it in France. The people will do it in America. What exactly is your interest in all this, Mr. Pulitzer? Not the same as yours, of course. And to sell a few newspapers.
look so desperate. They are desperate, Emma. And if you could speak to them, they would tell you that they are happy. Do you know why? Because they are alive. I've always thought of Russia as the country of Tolstoy and Turgenev. It's hard to believe that such atrocities could be committed there. Atrocities are always possible. If you were a Jew. Good stuff, chef. Thank you. He set up this camp. But it can only be temporary. There are many great problems. Almost no one here speaks English. Many of them are literate, even in Russian or Yiddish. Most of them are underfed. They need work. From work comes food. We'll do our best. I want to help. When caught the raven, never more. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Dostoevsky. Very good. And now, Mrs. Marchand. Had we but world enough and time this coyness lady were no crime, we would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. <laughs> and enroll our strength and sweetness <laughs> into one ball it's him, Seamus. And look at him. Not a gray hair on him. It's a, it's a drawing, boy. I know, but my God. Isn't he the handsomest thing you've ever seen? I want him home. I want him back. He's been gone too bloody long. And I'm, I'm, I'm living like... I'm not meant to be a saint, Seamus. Well, easy, easy now, darling. Is he sending you the money? Hi, every month, like a clock. And he writes letters, but it's not that I'm after, Seamus. It's himself. Well, there's a there's a simple way to solve the problem. If your ship don't come in, you're all out to meet it. Buy yourself a, a ticket. Yes, ma'am. Well, come with us. Where are we going? Oh, uh, he doesn't speak English. That's Itzhak. Uh, my name's Emma Lazarus. Hello, Miss Lazarus. Hello. You think he's coming back, James? Well, there'll be no need, because she's going there. <laughs> Sir. Sir, could I speak to a moment, please? 
Hello, uh, I'm Emma Lazarus from the Jewish Relief Agency. I'm sure you've heard about the horrible persecutions in Russia and the great number of refugees who've arrived here in New York. Uh, yes, I, I read about it. It's terrible. It's terrible. Well, we don't want any charity handouts, that sort of thing. What we do want is work. Now, these two young men, Hitzak doesn't speak any English, they have no experience. But I can guarantee you this, they will work very, very hard. Madam, I quite understand, but we don't need anyone here. I mean it. We don't. Is it because one of them is Jewish? Is that it? Was that it? No, no, no. I've got more people working here now than I know what to do with. Is it because one of them is black? If you had eyes in your head, you'd realize it isn't because he's black. That's Jack Marchand. You know him? Yes. Robert! Robert! What is it, James? See if you can find something for those two lads to do. Thank you. The fact is, Chief, we're kind of a new plateau. We're dead last in the city. We're a hell of a good newspaper. Well written, good stories, lots of pictures. We just can't get them to buy it again. That's defeatism, Carter. We can beat any newspaper in this city, and we will. Newspaper readers are creatures of habit. Uh, you know that, Chief. Uh, it's even worse in New York. They have their damn loyalties of different kinds. We can't start them over this again. Mm -hmm. What about the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> Chief, we tried it first last month and it died. We couldn't even raise 500 bucks. These people are looking to put food on their tables. They don't give a damn about a statue. I hear people talking about the statue everywhere. They'd rather read about murder. We can have murder and idealism, Carter. In what order? All right. Let's try again with the statue. But this time, let's offer to print the name of every person who contributes to the fund. Every single one, no matter how much they give, if they give a penny, if they give $500, they get their name in the paper on page one. And I'll start it off with a check for 500 Make it 1000 If I have to choose between murder and the Statue of Liberty, which do I use? Both. Metropolitan Museum, Jack. You'll just love it. They filled it up. You know, I, I like this fellow Rembrandt most of all. You feel like you know all the people in his paintings. <laughs> There's even one man who looks just like Seamus. <laughs> oh, and didn't I tell you? I, I, I took our Sarah to a great big concert at the Opera House on 23rd Street. It was by this man, Beethoven. 
it, it was just it was just the grandest, biggest thing you ever heard. I was almost in tears at the end, just wishing you were there. <laughs> Come over here. Over here. Sit down. Now I want you to listen. And don't you dare laugh. <laughs> Let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball. And with great pleasure, tear our pleasure <laughs> with rough strife through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our sun stand still, Yet we can make him run. Isn't that just bloody great? <laughs> I, I wanted to change the line to the copper gates of life instead of the iron gates. But... Our next poet, please. Our next poet is like Liberty herself, a woman. She's been published in all of the major literary reviews and her work is highly regarded by critics both here and abroad. And she's written a special poem in support of the world's campaign to erect the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Emma Lazarus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor, the twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Order some champagne. We've done it. We raised the money.
Joe Johnson here is the only one in the shop that speaks Yiddish. Uh, so he starts speaking to this kid, Itzak. Uh, well, Itzak thinks it's a trick. He thinks that Robert is some kind of uh, black Cossack spy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were hitting that off pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but he speaks pretty good English now. That boy Frankie, the orphan, he taught him. And that Itzak, he's got some talent. Huh, Shamus? Ah, oh, indeed. Oh, what about your kids? Oh, Jack, my oldest boy. I can't keep him out of the park. He's always wanted to play this new game they got. Baseball. This. Yeah, they got this itty bitty ball in this. Oh, bat. and don't forget to tell him about the bridge to Brooklyn. Ah, Brooklyn. And the electric? Oh, that new bridge, it's amazing. And it's so beautiful. And we're getting a new electric at the shop. Of course, the whole world is getting it. But we're getting it first. <laughs> Not if it doesn't blow up the whole city before they turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to be home. I... They're a miracle. Becoming real at last. What was it you called her in your poem? Mother of Exiles? <laughs> yes. I wrote that before I even saw it. This drawing. Oh. Leonardo wasn't at the Last Supper either. <laughs> How are you? I'm not well, Jack. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm going abroad to try to get better. With any luck, I should have a year in Italy. I've always wanted to go to Italy, and now I have the chance. Well, Rome is full of poems, they say. Ah, there you are, Miss Lazarus. I was afraid you'd been blown into the sea. I see you found Marsha. He was one of the men I wanted you to meet. He's invaluable. Oh, uh, we've met. She wrote a wonderful poem for us. Yes, I agree. A wonderful poem. Yes, well, come, we must go. I want you to talk to the stonemasons.
Please, close the shutter, sister. I'm having trouble with the light. Seamus Riley honored me by working on the Statue of Liberty. But I always wanted him to know that the statue honors men like him and men like you. It is a monument to liberty, but before it is anything, it is a monument to you. Men and women who work in freedom. Men free to work with their brains and their hands and their hearts. In all the centuries of the world, no group of craftsmen has ever done anything to equal the hope of this colossus. I dreamed her. She is my daughter of liberty, but you made her real. And now she belongs to Seamus, to Frankie Martin, and to all of you. She's yours. And your children's, and your children's children. When people come to see her in future generations, they will know that men built her. Men of flesh and bone and courage. Men who love liberty. She's yours forever. <laughs> Like the spirit 
itself. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will construct something that will outlast us all. Liberty is priceless. To liberty. America. I fought a war for it. I want to be an American. To be free. We am a cover smith. It's good to be home. It's a wonderful country we live in, Ada. Mm -hmm. We've done it. We raised the money. Oh, Joe, yeah, we've done it. There are miracles. It's there. Wasn't there before. Be there after we're gone. I wish you were here. Here he is. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea wash sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor the Twin Cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. <laughs>